Okay. Right at the uh, elevator, as you go around the elevator, All there's right. a stair right there. If you'll take that little spiral stair. Trespass, I said, I don't have one. They didn't give me one. He said, Mike didn't give you one? I said, Mike McSpadden? No, he didn't give me one. in their really their biggest test of the of the season uh, biggest test of the playoff and that was in overtime a 23 17 win and then Alma went to ash down they went to Newport beat them then they went to ash down beat them 24 nothing went to Magnolia last week beat those beat Magnolia 24 to 14 Osceola has defeated Valonia uh, excuse me Valonia 36 to 7 and then they defeated Watson Chapel 27 to 7 and last week defeated Greenwood 42 to 39. That's big and their biggest tough, toughest test of the season all year long at 4 Osceola. Wow. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're just about a minute away from the kickoff. Maybe not even that long. The Alma Airedales out there on the field ready to kick off as they take on the Osceola Seminoles. And the Seminoles are defending 2A state champions. Alma defending 3A state champions playing in the 4A. That makes good sense. <laughs> Clifford Gabble going to be doing the kicking for the Alma Airedales. This is what they like to do. They like to get their defense out there, kind of get the jitters out. To, I have never seen Coach Vines take the ball first when they when the Airedales won the toss. They always like to get that defense out, get everything out of the way, and and to get that defense in there, get them an opportunity. Uh, standing back deep. Uh, looks like it's number 30 for uh, that's Harold James for the Osceola. Seminoles. I'm going to call them the Panthers all night. I, I already know that. So uh, here's the kickoff, and it's an end over end line drive type kick. Hits at the 15 to the 14. Now Wood picks it up at the 20 to the 25, and he's tackled at about the 29, maybe the 30 yard line. Harold James. I said Woods. It was Harold James with that football, and the Osceola will take possession first and 10. Looks like they'll mark it at about the 29. We'll call it the 29 yard line. Uh, Hill split wide to the left, wishbone pitch back. A fumble to football, but he picks it up as James fumbled the football. He picked it up and he's dropped for a couple of yard loss. It just bounced right back up into his hands. Harold James around the left side and no get lost the two on the play. Going to bring up second down. Second down and 12. Wide receiver split wide to the left is Hill. Here's the quarterback gives to the fullback up the middle. That's Dabney and he's going to get about two, maybe three on the play as he gets to the 30 yard line. Maybe the 31 looks like the 31. So he gets about four on the play going to bring up third down third and long. Irvin Hill is the wide receiver. He's going to be split wide to the left. Thompson, the quarterback. Segundia Thompson, the quarterback, calling the signals. Wishbone got a flag flying. Back to pass is Thompson, and it looked like the center moved, and then also the left uh, end split in move. So there was double movement there against Osceola. And that's going to be illegal procedure against the Ola Osceola Seminoles, and it's going to bring up a third down and about 14 instead of third and nine. Really 
Segundia Thompson was dropping back to pass, so that might be an indication of what's going to happen here on third and long, third and 14. Osceola pitch back. Now they do a double reverse, coming over to the right side, and he's going to be tackled behind the line of scrimmage is Mosley, as uh, he didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage, so they're going to have to punt the ball resting at the 24-yard line. Good defensive play. Well, what, one of the things, uh, Tony, that Coach Vine said also, that they got to stay at home. you got to stay at home. That means that those linemen, when they come across that line, they can't be chasing the ball where they think it is. They got to stay home and wait for it to come, and that's what they did. Thompson getting ready to punt. Here's the snap and the punt. It's a line drive kick. Perry takes it at the 45 on the run to the 50. Down to the 44-yard line, 46-yard line, so Airedales will have good field position at their own. 46-yard line, I'm, excuse me, at Osceola's 46. Excellent field position for the Airedales. Nine minutes, 57 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Alma and Osceola, no score. Two wide receivers split wide to the right. New formation for the Airedales. Pit handoff goes to Perry. He's going to be crushed behind the line of scrimmage and looked like there were three or four Osceola defenders right there to block him, and he lost a yard on the play. Odin split wide to the right. Looks like uh, Bruce is flanked. No, that's Householder is flanked left. Householder in the ball game. Back to pass is Lee. Looking now he's on the option. He's going to be uh, uh, sacked behind the line of scrimmage at the 49. He went back to pass. Couldn't find anybody. And I see number 41, Henry Householder, in the ball game for the Airedales. Uh, Aaron Bruce is on the sidelines. Harrison split wide to the left. Odin wide to the right. Double wing formation. Householder Perry in the slots. Shotgun formation back to pass. Looking is Lee. He's got a man down up field. Incomplete as he threw over the top. He had him open just for a second, but it was way up over the top to Andrew Harrison. It's going to bring up fourth down. The Airedales are going to have to punt the football as the ball is on about the 49-yard line. So actually three plays and a punt, and they lost three yards on the three plays. B.J. Stroud standing at his own 35-yard line. Eight minutes, 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter. No score. Here's the punt. It's a high, high punt. Hits at the 20 and going to be going down at the 23-yard line. The Airedales tried to pull it back as it went, took a Seminole bounce. I mean, yes, the Seminoles bounce at the 23-yard line. So Osceola will take over first and 10 at the 23. Irvin Hill going to be split wide to the left. Wishbone formation, that famous wishbone. Here he goes. Moses, I mean, uh, James going over to the left side. He's got running room. He's at the 30, 35, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Enough for a first and 10. Looks like a gain of almost 16 yards. He took... That's just that straight play, that, that option. If you run a, it really wasn't an option, just a pitch back on the wishbone. Here comes the Seminoles. Gives off to the fullback up the middle on that play, and he goes over to the left side, and he's going to go up the middle, and he gets about three on the play, or maybe we'll count it two, so it's going to bring up a second down and eight. Eight minutes, 13 seconds to go here in the first quarter. No score. Seminoles with the ball at their own 41-yard line.
Pitch back goes to James going over the left side and he's going to be hit and stood up and then driven backwards by the Airedales and they're gang tackling and that's what you want the Airedales to do. You want them to gang tackle and that's what they did on that play. One thing Tony about the play when you're playing like this both teams are running teams are not very they don't pass that much so that means the clock's going to be continuously running all the time and that's really I believe it's in the favor of the Airedales because that's what they do they run that clock out and uh, that looks like that's what's going to happen third down and six for the Seminoles the ball almost to the 43 yard line wide receiver split wide left wishbone as Thompson brings the plays pitch back goes over to the left side to number 22 for Seminole and he's going to be done we got two flags flying though J.J. Richardson, and uh, we got two flags flying, so we'll have to wait and see what the penalty is. L probably in that area, it's holding. I, when you have that big yard, 15-yard penalty, unless it's going to bring up a fourth and long, you got to take that because that's going to take the ball all the way back, and that's going to bring up a third down. Looks like third and about 17 uh, for Seminoles, for Osceola Seminoles, with seven minutes and 10 seconds to go. Here in the first quarter, no score. Third down and 17. Hill split wide to the left. Shotgun, I mean, a wishbone formation. It pits back, goes over to the right side, or, and here comes number 33, or Mosley, and he's going to be tackled at the 42-yard line, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. So the Airedales hold. He got back about eight of it. Boy, you hate to see him when they get out there and you see daylight, and all of a sudden the Airedales came and just uh, went forward and got him. But uh, it's going to bring up fourth down along, and the Seminoles are going to have to punt the football again. Segundia so Thompson back to punt. He's standing at his own 28-yard line. The back deep is the Airedale's receiver. Here's a punt. It's an end-over-end -end punt. He hits at the 30, goes down, and it's going to be down at the 20-yard line. So the Airedales will take over in not good field position, but at the 20-yard line. Double wing formation for the Airedales. Both receivers out left in, is Odin and right is Harrison. Now, pitch option play. Back to Perry going over to the right side to the 30, 35, 40, 45. One man, 50, 45 as he cuts back to the 40. 35, 30, 25, 20. Taken down at the 22-yard line. Ethan Perry has really excited the Airedales here with a, looks like a 60. 62-yard run by Ethan Perry. Wow, what a run. Three, two wide receivers split wide to the, re to the left. Here goes uh, Gavel up the middle across the 15 down to the 14, maybe the 13. So it's going to bring up a first, a second down and five, it looks like. You know, on that run, Ethan Perry, when he turned that corner, man, he turned it on. And he had one man to beat. He beat him. But by the time he went around him and sidestepped him, then the other defenders caught up to him. And I thought he was going to go all the way. Drinkwitz split wide to the right. Harrison split wide to the left. Double wing formation as the halfbacks are in the slots. Perry on the left. Here goes, no, that's Gavel in motion. And Lee keeps the ball. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. Touchdown, Airedales. Chad Lee on a 14-yard touchdown run. They faked the option, and then he cut back against the grain, and it was all nobody touched him, and it's touchdown, Airedales.
Here's Fencer for the point after with 5.07 to go here in the first quarter, six to nothing. Here's the snap, Harrison holding. The kick is up, looks good from here, and it is. The Airedales take a quick seven to nothing lead with 5.07 to go here in the first quarter. We're going back to studio, take a 30 second break. We'll be right back. Gavel on a 14 yard touchdown run by Chad Lee, but it was set up by Ethan Perry, Ethan Perry's 62 yard run uh, from the line of scrimmage, and that made the big difference in that scoring drive. Here is Gavel getting ready to kick off. Here's the kick. It's a high end over end kick taken at the 20 by James. He goes to the 25, to the 30, 35, 40. Down to the 41 yard line is Harold James as he goes to the 41 yard line, and that's where he'll take over first and 10. Osceola with the football, and they'll take over at the 42. That's the best field position they've had so far this evening. Okay, here is the wishbone for the Seminoles. They give off to James going over the left side. He breaks loose. He's at the 45 to the 50 down inside Airedale territory. Looks like about the 49, and he's going to be close to the first down. Looks like it's going to be short, just about a half a yard or say a yard. So it's going to be second down and a yard, second and a yard. Four minutes, 41 seconds. Osceola trying to answer back to the Airedale's touchdown. Wide receiver is Hill, split wide to the left. Wishbone formation, Thompson calling the signals. Gives off to the left or right halfback, or left halfback, that's Bo Mosley. He's got enough for the first down as he goes to the 45. First and 10 at the 44-yard line of the Alma Airedales. Wishbone formation, Thompson calling the signal. Segunda Thompson gives off to the left halfback. That's James going over to the side, and he's going to get down to the 40. Looks like he's going inside the 40 down to about the 37-yard line. So this is what Osceola does good and does the best is just run the football on those options. Wide receiver is Hill, split wide to left, wishbone formation, Thompson calling signals, gives off to Mosley over to the right side. Mosley goes to the 35, and then he's driven backwards by the Airedales. I don't think he got enough for the first down, but he's going to be close. Looks like it's going to be third down. Three minutes, 33 seconds to go here in the first quarter. The, oh, they mark it at the 36, so they said he didn't get back. 36-yard line is going to be third down and about two. Third and a long two. We'll call it third and third and two. Wide receiver split wide to the left is Hill. Wishbone formation. Thompson calling the signals. Gives off to James on over the left side, and he has enough. What they do is those halfbacks are lining up, and they're if they line up in the right side, the right halfback, they're going to the left side. If they line up to the left side, they're going to the right side. And that's the advantage of getting your fullback and your halfback in front of you to block which gives you a couple extra blockers. So that's what the Osceola team is doing. And they got enough for the first down. That's the second first down of this drive. 3.03 to go here in the first quarter. And it is seven to nothing in favor of the Airedales. The Airedales, the home team. The ball on the 32 and a half yard line, first and 10. Osceola calling signals is Thompson. Pitch back, goes to James, going over to the left side. James at the 30 to the 25, knocks somebody down at the... 22 yard line and he is close to the first down. Looks like he's got enough for the first down. Was, but he absolutely ran over somebody I close think to the line it, of scrimmage. I think it was Caldwell. Boy, he really nailed him. And when you're running the ball, you, you try to run around him. He just ran over him. Two minutes, 28 seconds ago, first and 10 at the 22. They give off to the fullback. He's going to get to the 20-yard line, so a gain of a yard and a half on the play. Going to bring up second down. Once again, Jay Metter making, uh, assisting there on the tackle. He pulled him down from, uh, from his shoes, and there was another couple of guys bringing him down from up high. Jay Metter has been an anchor of this defense all season long, and he's certainly having a good game tonight. Second down and eight, almost eight and a half. They, they never really change that much in their plays. I mean, as, as far as their setup, they're setting up in the wishbone. 
Over to Mosley, going over the left side. Got flags flying, and usually somebody's offside or illegal procedure, illegal motion. And we'll have to wait and see. A minute, 55 seconds to go. Alma leading seven to nothing. We're in the first quarter of action. Illegal procedure against the Seminoles. That's going to bring them back five yards. So instead of second and eight, it's going to be second and 13. The ball will be on about the 25 and a half yard line. That's the third penalty for Osceola here still in the first quarter. And this is something that they're certainly going to want to try to affect or try to correct. I'm not sure what their tendencies are as far as penalties go. OK, it's going to be third down, a uh, second down, second down and 13, almost 14. The quarterback fumbled. No, I started to say he fumbled the football, but they were looking and looks like Mosley had. I mean, James had the ball, but he was dropped immediately. Might even lost a yard. Good defensive pursuit by the Airedales. It looked like uh, Josh Moore and a couple of the other defensive linemen were almost in the huddle on those plays. And and uh, just another tribute to the coaching of the Alma Airedales in good preparation. Third down and 14. They did lose the yard. Third and 14. The ball at the 26 yard line. Wide receiver split wide to the left is Hill. Third and 14. Pitch back goes to Mosley coming over to the left side. He's going to be hit and tackled. Number 71 for the Alma Airedales. Find my sheet, and that's Kenny Cole, and he makes the tackle at the 25-yard line. So a gain of a yard is going to bring up fourth down. Big decision time for Seminoles real quick, and it looks like the Seminoles want a timeout and talk about it. The score is 7 to nothing. 50 seconds to go here in the first quarter. We're going to go back to the studios, take a one-minute break. We'll be right back. Oh, here in the first quarter, Seminoles, the Osceola Seminoles with a big decision right here at fourth down and 13. And the ball is on the 25-yard line, almost probably out of field goal range. They're trying to decide to kick a field goal or go for it. Well, I don't know anything about the kicker. Shockley is the kicker for Osceola, and this would be about a 42-yard attempt. That's a pretty good haul for a high school kicker. But then again, it's a pretty good haul for uh, fourth and 14 on the offense, too. So uh, it is a big decision time, and they've got to decide whether they want to unveil the first pass or they want to try to stick with what they've done. And they've had a couple of big plays on that. Yeah, I think you got to go for it. Uh, I just, your 42 yards is awful long for a high school kicker, and that's what they're going to do. They line up in the wishbone formation. Fourth down, 13. Fourth down, 14. Yeah, 13, they're going for it. Back to pass is Thompson looking, looking. Throws way downfield. Incomplete. And the Airedales have held on the first big test of that defense. The Airedales have held, and the Airedales will get the ball first and 10 at the 25. That was a good pass by Thompson. He had Irvin Hill down there open in the end zone. Oh, he really wasn't, wasn't open. He was. He had two guys around him, but the quarterback did a good job of threading the needle. It was just about a foot too far. He dove for it and was just not able to come up with a good pass coverage. Matt Swift down there as well as Caldwell on the pass coverage, but uh, they, they caught a little bit of a break there. First and 10 for the Airedales at the 25-yard line. Chad Lee calling the signals for Alma. Harrison split wide to the left. Drinkwitz wide to the right. Perry in the slot to the left. Looks like Householder in the slot to the right. Here goes Perry in motion to the right side. Gives off to Gavel up the middle. He's going to get about four, maybe four and a half on the play. Clifford Gavel, the fullback, straight up the middle, and he's going to get about four. 33, 32 seconds. That might be, just depends on when they start the, the uh, play clock. Uh, that might be the... They're starting them at the same time, so we might have one more play. I think Coach Vines is just going to wait. Now they're going to, he's looking. 14 seconds to go. Two, three wide receivers split wide to the left. Second down and six for the Airedales. Lee calling the signals. Here goes a man in motion, his householder coming over to the left side. Option play to the right side comes Perry, and Perry tries to get around the corner, and he goes to about the 32 yard line. That's the end of the first quarter with a score. Alma, seven. Osceola, zero. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Seven to nothing in favor of the Airedales over the Osceola Seminoles right here in Razorback Stadium, War Memorial Stadium. Actually, not Razorback, but the Razorbacks play three of their games here. And uh, we are playing for the state championship, the Alma Airedales and the Osceola Seminoles. And it is seven to nothing. Airedales with the ball. They'll have third down and short. Third and about a yard and a half. Two wide receiver. Wide receiver is Harrison split wide to the left. Man in a slot to the left. Gives off to Perry to the left side. And he's going to be short. He stretches the football out. But he's going to be short of about six inches, maybe, maybe a foot. 
And uh, here's a big decision for Coach Vines, but uh, it's going to be fourth down and if a foot. I, I don't know. It's kind of tough on your own end of the field when even in, in at this point in the game, early in the second quarter, that's a it's, it's not very far. But then again, if you don't make it, you've given them the ball with about 35 yards to go to the end zone. Looks like they're going to punt it away. He reached over and put his hands on Odin and started to send the play in. And then he came back and he said, no, get out there, team. Go kick the football. If you're about 10 more yards up, it makes it a little tougher. But I think from this point, he made the right decision. Yeah. Here's the snap. B.J. Stroud getting ready to punt the football. A high, spiring punt goes over to the left side and is tackled. I mean, excuse me, is caught there by at the 35-yard line by James. And he's going to be hit at the 41, 42-yard line. So uh, the Seminoles will take over in good field position. Alma has to punt the football away. 11.04 to go here in the second quarter. Seven zip in favor of the Airedales. Airedale defense going to be called again. Called on once again. They were three downs and punt the first drive, four downs and punt the second drive, and then they gave up a pretty good uh, drive uh, against Osceola but forced it over on downs. First and 10 for Osceola. The ball almost to the 42-yard line as Osceola comes in number one in the state. And, of course, they are, uh, the last I pulled, I saw a two-point favorite here. But the Airedale's leading seven zip with 11.04 to go. Wishbone formation. Pitch back goes to Mosley over to the right side. Mosley's going to get a couple on the play. And there again, you throw the ball back to those halfbacks. You, let, you got a tailback and, a, I mean, another halfback and a fullback leading the way and just let them block for you. That's what the wishbone attack is all about, particularly when they don't focus on the triple option. We, we've we seen that uh, this week, uh, reading all the, the information about Osceola. They just come right at you, and they put that third back in the backfield just as an extra blocker, and, and it works for them. Second down and seven for Osceola. Thompson calling the signals. Pitch back goes to Mosley again, going over to the right side. He's going to be tackled at about the 45. Got a flag down at the 47-yard line. And as we say, usually it's holding. When it's back in that defense, it's either holding or, or clipping. Blocking below the knees. That's the in favor. So the Airedales will get a good penalty out of that one. It's going to be instead of second and seven, if they take the penalty, that's going to move them back 15 yards. Seven, uh, seven nothing is the score. 10-29 to go here in the second quarter. Airedales with the lead. Osceola with the football. And they move them all the way back to the 30-yard line. This has got to be very frustrating for the Osceola coaching staff. Four penalties, and they've all they've come one on each drive, and they've all kind of taken the wind out of their sails each time, particularly on the last drive when they were driving down, and they got the five-yard penalty, made them fourth down a real long situation. Now they've got a second down and about, uh, oh. 22. Yeah. <laughs> Country mile, you yeah. were going to say. Second down and 22 for Osceola. The clock is moving again with 10.22 to go here in the first half. Airedale's with the lead, 7 to nothing. Wide receiver split wide to the left is Hill. Wishbone formation. Handoff goes to James over to the left side. He's to the 30, 35, 40. He got back all of the penalty as he got back to the 41-yard line. So it's going to bring up a third down. Looks like third and about 11. And he got 14 of it back on that penalty so he did real well to getting it back but it's going to be to the 41 yard line third down and 11. nine minutes uh, 50 seconds to go here in the second hill split wide to the left third and nine they give off to mosley again same play he's going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage he gets away and then he's tackled at the 40 and there's what you like to see tony about five or six maybe seven airedales right there to make the tackle gang tackling is what you like they did a very good job on that play of gang tackling and that was something that i know that they preached to this defense all week long because they were talking about you got to wrap up on the first defender and to aid in that you get the first guy making the hit and everybody else swarms in and closes in for the kill that's what they did it was a whole pack of airedales on that tackle now you got to really i don't know if they've ever done it but you got to remember segunda thompson is the quarterback he's back to pass i mean back to punt but he is also the quarterback here's a punt it's a high wobbly punt perry calls for the pair fair catch and he goes down at the 26 yard line so alma will take over at the 26. what i was going to say is uh segunda thompson is the quarterback and he is also the punter but when you line up like that and especially if you get past midfield you got to be careful because he could just take off running with it he's very fast he's also the quarterback so it means he might be able to throw a pass as well so it is something there that's going to have to watch for ethan perry making a good judgment call on that play to make the fair catch because if he lets it bounce that was one of those kind of punts that could have skipped on inside the 10-yard line 
I still see uh, number 28 Aaron Bruce sitting on the sidelines and uh, number 41 Henry Householder doing the play. He's playing three wide receivers split wide to the left. Perry in the slot to left. Here goes Householder in motion to the left side. They give off to Gavel up the middle. He's going to get a couple on the play. It looks like the one of the men had his hands wrapped around Gavel and trying to pull him backwards and Gavel just kept his feet turning. Gavel is so good about that. He is uh, five foot seven hundred fifty five pounds or something along those lines. But he that doesn't count for his heart. His heart is of a guy of about 200 pounds because he just keeps his turning. He's so quick. His first two steps are probably quicker than any other of the Airedales, and he can get into the secondary pretty quickly. And he grinded out some yards on that play. Drinkwitz split wide to the right. Odin split wide to the left. Householder in the slot to the right. Perry in the slot to the left. Here goes two men in motion. Now they switch. He's got two men fly. Somebody messed up there big time because both of the halfbacks were running toward each other. And that's the first time I've seen that all year long. I don't know which one was wrong, but somebody was. Yeah, it looked like they were going to run into each other right as they got behind the quarterback. But Householder and Perry both at the same time sprung up. So one of them got the play call wrong. Sure, somebody got it wrong there because uh, but what, what happened is it's going to be now that's an illegal procedure motion, a motion penalty, and they're going to decline the penalty and take the play. Uh, Lee was tackled for a, about a three-yard loss, and I've never seen it. I guess they just they went ahead and take the penalty. I mean, take the play. So instead of a second down and long, it's going to be third down and 11. Two wide receivers, one to the left, one to the right. Shotgun formation. Got a flag flying again. And uh, we'll have to wait and I see. I think it's going to be a delay again. Illegal snap is what they call it. I was waiting to see what they call. So that's going to take them back to the 20 yard line. They started at the 26. Now they're back at the 20. So it's going to be third down and 16 for the Airedales with 802 to go here in the second quarter. Seven to nothing is a score. Airedales need a big play here. Odin split wide to the left or wide to the right. Harrison wide to the left with Perry in the slot to the left. Shotgun formation for the Airedales. Back to pass. Looking, looking. He's got Perry. He's got it. Down to the sidelines as Harrison catches the football. Or did he drop it? Dropped it as he got to the sideline. Andrew Harrison had it in his arms and it fell out. I'm not sure for the angle we had. I couldn't tell if he had a good grip on it or not. But the chance Lee did a good job of laying the ball in there. Boy, he laid it in and I thought he had it. And then I looked down and I saw the shadows and I couldn't see if he didn't have it or not. But he fumbled the football or didn't lost the football, didn't catch it. And it's going to bring up fourth down. So the Airedales are going to have to punt. Osceola should get good field position on this exchange. JoJo Richardson and Harold James back deep. Here's the snap. B.J. Stroud with the punt. It's a high, wobbly punt, and they're going to let it hit. It hits at the 40, goes to 45, goes down to the 50, down to the 45, down to the 40, and they pick it up at the 40. So that was a good play. That looked like it went, uh, what, 10, 20, 30, 40 yards on that punt, and it really, they should have fair, you know, signal for a fair catch at about the 47, 48. But well, it's a good punt. B.J. Stroud has done a great job all year long. It, he gets good hang time on his punts, but all of that, also with that, he gets good rolls on that, and that's what he did on that. And so they're going to start on their own 40-yard line, which is good field position, but not near as, as good as it could have been. Wishbone formation. Osceola with the football. Thompson calling the signals. Gives off to the left halfback. That's Mosley. Mosley coming straight up the middle. Got a flag flying. We've had a lot of penalties. And here's another flag well, at the 40-yard line. And we'll have to wait and see what the official calls. Holding against the Seminoles. Holding against the Seminoles. So that's going to back them up another 10. Well, that's seven penalties on both teams that have been accepted. Five of those have come from Osceola, and there have been another couple that have been declined. So this has been quite the penalty field game. Osceola has had one penalty on each of their drives, and it has really uh, come back to haunt them, I think. Uh, they had at least one drive where they were driving down pretty good and then uh, got the penalty and take the wind out of their sails a little bit. That is will bring up a second down and 20 at the 30 yard line. Wide receiver is split wide to the left. Shot, I mean, uh, wishbone formation for the Seminoles. They give off to Mosley going over to the right side. Mosley gets to the 40 to the 35 to the 36 yard line is Bo Mosley as he goes back to the right side there again lines up in that left halfback position runs over to the right side. Got those blockers ahead of him and 
really the you know most teams run from the wishbone they run the option I don't think they've run the option all night I haven't seen it they just take the ball and they use that extra back as an extra blocker and they just run right up the middle on you just like coach Vine said they would okay wishbone formation Thompson calling the signals gives off to uh, tops I mean James over to the right side and he's going to get a yard or two on the play and that's going to be it he's going to be driven backwards that's going to bring up a third down so the Airedale's good doing good on defense it's going to bring up third down and 12 they're close to the mid part of the field and they've only attempted one pass I would expect this will be the second one they've only thrown as I said 68 passes so far this season so about five attempts a game is all you usually see. Wide receiver split wide to the left is Hill. Option. They give off, and it's going to be tackled right at the as they gave off to Mosley, and he's tackled at the 40-yard line. The Airedale's defense, you've got to give them credit. They have done good. Uh, in fact, they've had three times that have three plays and out, and then one time they got a first down and then another play, three plays and out. So the Airedale defense have really done their job so far here tonight as they have held the Seminoles tight. Harrison, I mean, uh, Perry back deep standing at the 25 yard line back deep for the Seminoles is number nine Segundia Thompson here's the snap here's the punt it's a line drive punt and he hits over Perry's head and Perry picks it up at the 18 tries to cut over to the left side to out of bounds and he's going to be at the 25 26 yard line he really as he the ball hit at the about the 20 that bounced straight up in the air he caught it at the 18 and then took it over to the 26 of so the Airedales will have the ball first and 10 at the 26 yard line five minutes 50 uh, five minutes 31 seconds to go here in the first half seven to nothing is the score the Airedales with the lead and the football first and 10 at the 26 yard line Chad Lee coming in after getting the plays from head coach Frankie Vines two wide receivers Drinkwitz and Harrison split wide to the left householder in the slot to the left Perry Flanked right. Here goes Perry in motion to the left side. They give off to Gavel up the middle. He's going to get to the 30-yard line, so a gain of about, they, they say it's almost the 27. So Gavel gets about three on that play. Looking at the offensive yardage so far, the Alma Airedales have 84 yards of total offense before that play, 86 yards for Osceola, so it's been pretty evenly matched, except for the fact that you look at 62 of those yards for Alma came on one play where Ethan Perry had the 62-yard run. So the Osceola defense has done a good job of maintaining the Alma Airedales. Drinkwitz and Oden split wide to the left. Perry in the slot to the left. Householder flanked right. Lee calling the signals. Here goes Perry in motion to the left side. Option play goes to Perry. Perry trying to get outside and he couldn't turn the corner. He's tackled at the 26 yard line. Mosley in on the tackle is coming up from his cornerback position and he really hit Perry and drove him backwards. He's going to go back to about the original line of scrimmage there, driving him back three plus yards. And Ethan Perry, a similar play to the one he ran the touch or got the 62 yard run on. But at that time, there was four guys staring him right in the face as soon as he got the pitch and really nowhere to go. Four minutes, 25 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Seven to nothing is a score. Airedales with the lead. Harrison split wide to the left. Drinkwitz wide to the right. Double wing formation, shotgun formation for the Airedales. Lee calling the signals. Back to pass. He's looking downfield. Now he started to run. Now he passes incomplete. Aaron Bruce had the ball right through his hands wide open and he couldn't hang on to it. It's going to bring up fourth down. That's one of those plays that just didn't quite make the connection. Chad Lee made a superb decision. He cut it upfield. He looked up and saw Aaron Bruce wide open. He rushed the pass real quickly and he threw it behind Bruce a little bit. It was just one of those situations where he saw it at the last second and, and tried to make the pass and just didn't quite make the connection, but a good effort by Chad Lee. Number 22 is Jojo Richardson along with James. Here's the snap. Here's the punt. It's a high punt. And a fair catch called for by James at the 44-yard line. So Osceola will take over. This is their sixth possession. Now they'll take over first and 10 at the 44. The Airedales have had five possessions scored once. The Osceola Seminoles have had six possessions and have not scored. They got down to the 25-yard line but couldn't go any farther. 3.59 to go here in the second quarter. 7 to nothing is the score. Airedales with the lead. And Seminole with the, I mean, the Osceola Seminoles with the football. Hill split wide to the left. Wishbone formation, the same formation. They have not varied from that formation at all. They give off to James. At, and he is hit with what looks like right at the line of scrimmage and driven backwards. And there again is the gang tackling. 
It is, and Jed Kinnick came up and made the first hit, the number 57 for the Alma Airedales, one of the defensive ends, and he just stood the man up, and the rest of them came in and gang tackled and brought him down. Good job of defensive on that play. 3.38 to go here in the second quarter. 7 0 is the score. The Alma Airedales trying to go back to back in state championships. Osceola trying to win back to back state championships. The handoff goes to James over to the right side. James, same play they ran, and he gets to the 50 yard line and a gain of about six on that play. So it's going to bring up third down and four. Same play. And it looks like they're running a cross buck on that particular play as they fake to the fullback going to the right side, give to James going to the left side. But he couldn't get anything but six yards. We're going to bring up third down. Third down and four, a long four. Wide receiver split wide to the left is Aaron Hill. Here is Thompson. Same play again. Now to come over to the right side. He's not going to make it, and he's tackled at the 50-yard line. Again, there are about three. Every time that he's tackled, there's about three Airedales right there, and they're doing an excellent job. They really are, and of course, B.J. Stroud, one of the leading tackler for the Airedales coming into tonight's game, hit 110 tackles coming into tonight. He made an initial hit, came across the field, and saw the ball carrier coming, and speared him about the time he got towards the right tackle spot and, and knocked him down, and it's going to force him to punt one more time. I think Osceola's coach was deciding they were talking about or looking like they were going to go for it, but I think they're going to go ahead and punt the football now. But if I was Alma, I would. this is where I was talking about it. It's, you're at the 50-yard line. Your defense is doing well. I think you've got to watch out for a trick play here. They got a man motion, just exactly what I said. <laughs> I, they, I, I was thinking of the same thing. That was kind of like a prophetic thing there, Mike. Yes. It's kind of scary. Yes, really. it is. Very scary. But when you're at the 50-yard line, your defense is playing well. You got fourth down and four. What they did is they had a right end uh, uh, jump off sides or actually move. They were going to go for it. The ball went to James, uh, the halfback. They threw it to him, and he, I mean, just hiked the ball, snapped the ball to him. He was coming around the left side. But what happened was the right end got too excited. He jumped, and that gave him a five-yard penalty. When you bring in a trick play like that and trying to do it in a hurry as they did, sometimes you, you, you cause the guys to have to to, to think about a lot of things all at once and say, okay, now we're not doing a regular punt. We're, I, what's my assignment on this fake punt play? And he jumped the snap count. And that's what can happen when you try to rush it like that. Unfortunately for the Airedales, Osceola is getting called for now their sixth uh, penalty of this first half. And, and it will back them up to where I doubt that you will see them go for the fake on this play. You got a fourth down and about eight, eight and a half actually. So, uh, Osceola has called a timeout. They want to make sure we're not going to leave because we're just about uh, ready to, to go back out and start play. But two minutes and six seconds have run. That's all we have left here in the first half. The Alma Airedales leading seven to nothing. Uh, this is a very good Alma Airedale team that was really, the, 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 as we were talking earlier, the loss to Harrison kind of turned them around. They came back and beat uh, uh, Asylum Springs rather handily. And then the big boost was the win over Greenwood in overtime at Greenwood. The big win for the Airedales and turned this team around. And now they're playing the state championship and leading 7-zip. Here is the snap. Goes all the way back to the quarterback. He punts the football. A high, high spiraling punt. And Lee called for the catch. And that's going to be it. And got a flag flying. No, that was Brent Oden. But we got a flag at the 19. And that's usually a clip when it's back that far. We'll just have to wait and see, but usually when you're at the 19, that's going to be a clip or an illegal block. It's a clip against the Airedales. So if you go from the 19, you go back to about the nine yard line, and that's where the ball will be eight and a half yard line. You go half the distance of the goal. So the Airedales are going to start deep in their own territory again. Well, and with 157 left to go in the, in the half, you have a decision to make here. Do you want to just kind of run it out or do you want to try to make something happen? Was that the 14? I, if I was Coach Vines, I'd be saying something about it. they took that ball all the way back to the six yard line. You're supposed to go half the distance of the goal on a clip. Aren't you, Tony? Well, I didn't see where the where the it, it depends on where the, the spot of the clip actually was. It was at the 19 and that's where the flag was laying. But the Airedales have the ball first down at their own six yard line. So two wide receivers split wide to the left. They give off to Gavel, and he's going to get a yard on the play, and that's going to be it. Uh, Osceola has one timeout left. Alma has three timeouts left. The clock is going to be running, and I'll guarantee you Coach Vines is going to use all of that clock 
as trying to get out of a hole here. Uh, usually you go half the distance of goal. The only thing, if it's on the play and it's not before the ball is actually set, but you get half the distance, so the Airedale should have had the ball on the nine instead of the six, which uh, doesn't give you much running room. Again, a two, I mean, again, a yard on the play, second down and nine, 123. That clock is running. Six, five seconds, four seconds, three seconds on the play clock. Lee trying to get the snap off. He gets it off. Here comes Perry to the right side. He's at the 10, and he goes to the 11-yard 11, 11 line. So, boy, it looked like he was going to break it, and all of a sudden, boom, there comes the defender to tackle him. Minute and six seconds to go. That clock is running. Third down. Looks like third and about four for the Airedales. The ball at the 10-and-a-half-yard line. Well, I think what Coach Vines is doing here, he's just going to keep the ball on the ground, keep it safe back this far, and basically running out the clock. But you run a few plays, and, hey, if you're able to break one, that's all the better for you. It surprises me that Osceola doesn't call a timeout. They've got Airedales deep in their own territory. You call a timeout, you're going to get good field position, and I have a lot more time left on the clock. Alma's going to waste the time now to stop the clock, and that's what they do. They stop the clock with 33 seconds to go, but I wonder why Osceola didn't call a timeout with a minute left. I don't know. We're going to go back to studios. We'll take a one-minute break. We'll be right back. 33 seconds to go here in the first half. Alma leading 7 to nothing, but they're deep in their own territory at the 11-yard line. And Coach Vines comes up with third down and four. Third and four, a short four for the Airedales. The ball on about the 11 and a half. Harrison split wide to the left. Now it looks like Bruce is going to be flanked right, way flanked right. Now... Chad Lee wants a quarterback, wants a timeout. Somebody missed assignment. Somebody didn't know where they were going or what was happening. And, of course, the Airedales have two timeouts left. So we're going to go back to the studio take another break because we're going to take a break, and we'll be back in a minute. Third down and four for the Airedales. The ball at the 11-and-a-half-yard line. Wide receiver is Harrison split wide to the right. And looks like uh, Bruce in the slot to the right. Third and four for Alma. They come over to the left side. Lee on the option play, keeps the ball, goes across, and he's going to be close to the first down. It just depends on where they mark the ball, whether he's got a first down or not. If he's got a good mark, he's got it. If he doesn't have a good mark, he doesn't have it. Just that simple. And they marked the football, and I don't think they got it. Now, Osceola looks like they're going to take a timeout as well. I think they're going to bring the change in, but it looks like from here he's about six inches short of the first down, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Uh, for the Airedales deep in their own territory and they're bringing the chains out and it looks like they're about three inches short three inches short of a first down you've got fourth down and inches now the clock should start running when they mark the ball unless Osceola calls a timeout and that's what Osceola has done. Osceola has called a timeout. So with the score seven zip and 26 seconds to go, Osceola calls a timeout to stop the clock. Coach Vines trying to decide what, we're, what he's going to do. We're going to go back to the studio, take a 30-second break, and we're going to be right back. Fourth down and in inches for the Alma Airedales with 26 seconds to go. Deep in their own territory at the 16. B.J. Stroud standing back at the end zone, getting ready to, the, to punt the football. The Airedales must have, here's a snap. It's a good snap. Stroud with the punt. It's a line drive, end over end kick. Hits at the 40, goes to the 45, to the 50, goes all the way down to the 45-yard line. A good kick as a B.J. Stroud got the Airedales out of a hole. He really did, and it's going to give him a little breathing room there because he's got 14 seconds left. Osceola's going to take a couple of shots at it. They may go, try to go for that over-the-top pass we heard that they're good at, and uh, or they may try to run it and try to break one here, but they've got... Uh, a couple of shots if they try a pass, they have at least one if they try a running play, or they may just choose to go in down seven to nothing, but I don't look for that to happen. Seven to nothing is the score. Fourteen seconds to go. I think you gotta take a couple of shots because you're 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 down seven nothing. You don't have that much to lose. Wishbone formation for the Oso Osceola Seminoles. Back to pass. Looking, 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 throws way downfield. And good defensive play, but he's gonna be called for a penalty. Jason, uh, Jonathan Kimes is going to be called for our defensive pass interference. Now, in high school football, it goes back to the line of scrimmage and you get a 10-yard penalty or 10 or 15-yard penalty. It's not like in college or pro. 
Pro football, you get the ball right there. Really not a bad play because you lose, you used uh, eight seconds off the clock. Yeah, and Jason, uh, Jason Kimes doing an excellent job. Or Jonathan Kimes, you got me saying it now. I don't even know Jason. Jason is his big brother played last <laughs> I year. I know that. But, <laughs> but uh, Jonathan Kimes doing an excellent job on pass coverage, and it was just one of those deals where he reached in and got a little bit too much. Uh, I don't know. You know, it's one of those plays maybe he should have called it, maybe he didn't, but for whatever reason, now they're 40 yards from the end zone with six seconds to go, and they got another shot, at least one more at it. Coach Vines didn't like it. He was out there arguing about it. Six seconds to go. This could be the last play of the first half. Here's the snap. Back to pass. Looking, looking, looking. Throws down again, and it's going to be incomplete. With, that's the end of the first half with the Alma Airedales leading 7 to nothing in the state championship game of the 4A. We're going back to studios. Take a one-minute break, and we'll be putting points on the board. 43 points a game over the course of the season, 35 points a game in the playoffs, and they've also won 27 games in a row. And one of the things we were talking about, when you look at Osceola, you look at, at Alma, Coach Vines has been the head coach for 23 years. Coach Witherspoon has been there 16 years. I was talking to Coach Flinter just a, well, a Thursday afternoon, and Coach Flinter was there 13 years as assistant coach. Now, of course, he's the head coach of basketball and doesn't coach football. But as he said, you know, 23 years, the Airedales have never had a losing season under Coach Vines. That says a lot for Coach Vines and the Alma Airedales. And either 21 or 22 out of those years they've been to the playoffs. So, I mean, it's very, very good tradition, very consistent program. I was talking with Billy McKinney, who uh, played uh, of all about eight, nine years ago for the Airedales, and he was talking about some things that Coach Vines did then, and, and it reminded me a lot of this team that I've seen this year. And so Coach Vines has been very consistent. He's always uh, had outstanding teams. Of course, the last 16 years, Coach Witherspoon has been here, the defensive coordinator. McMurray's been here. You know, it's it's been a great continuity. You don't see that happen very often anymore, and it's been very uh, exciting for me to watch my first year in Arkansas. We're ready for the second half kickoff brought to you by Kitty College, 2 West Cherry Street. Not just a daycare, but quality child care. We'll go back to our studio for a 30-second break. We'll be right back. Here's the kickoff for the Alma Airedales. Perry taking the ball on the 9 to the 10 to the 15. Perry to the 20, 25. Goes to the 30. Perry to the 34-yard line. Easton Perry takes the kickoff from the 9 all the way to the 34. So that's a 24-yard, 25-yard return by Ethan Perry. And the Airedales will have the ball first and 10 at the, I said, yes, 34-yard line. Good return by Ethan Perry. Punt returns have been where he specialized this year, but he does a good job on kickoff returns as well. Decent field position for the Airedales. Be good to see coming out here after the break and see what adjustments they've made on offense if the Airedales can put a little more yardage on the board. Chad Lee, the quarterback, calling the signals for the Airedales. Henry Householder in there. Now, Odin split wide. I mean, excuse me, that's uh, Harrison split, split wide to the right along with Drinkwitz. They give on the option play to Perry coming over the left side, trying to get around the corner. He goes to the 40-yard line, goes out of bounds. They say the 39-yard line as he stepped out of bounds, trying to get on that option play. What it looks like they're doing is they're running back against everybody because they're bringing all the players over to the right side and running to the left. Well, you got some good quickness on that defensive line. They got a, they run a, a basically kind of an Oklahoma 52 a type defense is, is their base formation, which means they've got five men on the line, two linebackers, and they use those defensive ends kind of like outside linebackers. So in a way, it looks like a 3-4, and then they take advantage of their quickness that way, and it's especially good against the run. Odin bringing the plays in from head, co <coughs> head coach Frankie Vines. He's going to be split wide to the left. Drinkwitz wide to the right. Householder in the slot to the right. Perry in the slot to the left. Here goes Perry in motion to the right side. They give off to Gavel. He's going to be caught right at the line of scrimmage. I don't even know if he got back to the line of scrimmage. And that's going to bring up a third down and five, maybe six. Looks like they're going to mark it at the 44, uh, excuse me, 39-yard line. So it's going to be third down and five for the Airedales with 11.27 to go here in the third quarter. Airedales need a first down here. Harrison going to be bringing the plays in from head coach Frank, uh, Frankie Vines, and he's going to be split wide to the right, Odin wide to the left. Third down, five. Householder. And Perry, shotgun formation for the Airedales. Back to pass. They're looking, looking, looking. Throws to Harrison. He catches at the 45 to the 50. Harrison to the 45 to the 40. And he goes down at the 36-yard line. First and 10 for the Airedales. In Osceola territory at the 36. 
A 25 yard passing catch from Chad Lee to Andrew Harrison. Andrew Harrison has been a good big play man for these Airedales all season long. He's got pretty sure hands and got open on that play. Not real open, but open enough with Andrew Harrison's sticky hands to make the catch and made a good run out of it. 25 yard pickup. First and 10 for Alma at the 36 yard line. That's only the Airedales third first and 10. We've got a players an official timeout. Uh, one of the chains down on the far in the far side of the field had some problems with it, but it's straightened out now. So it's going to be first and 10 for Alma. The ball resting at the 36 yard line. The clock should be moving here in just a second. As Alma will have the ball first and 10. Coach Vines is always uh, short. He's telling his team just stay out there, wait for a little bit, let that play clock run down. You have 25 seconds from the time they mark the football and wave their arms. So that's what the Airedales are doing. Householder and Odin split wide to the left. Perry and Gavel in the backfield along with quarterback Chad Lee calling the signals. Lee, option play, gives off on a cross buck to Perry, goes across the 35 down to the 34 yard line. So a gain of about two on the play. Going to bring up second down. They're trying some different things on offense. We've seen some different possession, I mean, different formations and things for the Airedales. Trying to just give a little bit new wrinkle to it. You know, Coach Vines is, is one of those that's going to stick with what's been working for him all season long, but he's also not afraid to, to put something in during the week that's going to be something a little different and add a new wrinkle to the offense. Harrison and Drinkwitz going to be split wide. No, Drinkwitz now comes into the tight end. So Harrison split wide to the left. Householder flanked it left. Goes Perry on the shot to the left side, and Perry is going to get to about the line of scrimmage at the 34, and that's going to be a hit and just a maybe a half a yard on the play. It's going to bring up third down. Looks like third and nine. The Airedales are not close to field goal range yet. They're going to have to get another first down before they can even think about that. So at this point, we're just thinking getting a first down. They'll call it third down and eight as the ball is resting just inside the 34-yard line. So it's third down and eight for the Airedales. Nine minutes, 28 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Airedales leading seven to nothing. Odin wide to the left. Harrison wide to the right. Householder in the slot to the right. Perry slot to the left. Shotgun formation. Here goes Perry in motion to the right side. Back to pass. He looks in. He's got Perry at the 30. Perry to the 25, 20, 15, 10. Perry goes out of bounds at the four-yard line. He was barely shoved out of bounds. He did that, that tightrope walking down that sidelines and almost scored as he got down to the four-and-a-half-yard line. Excellent job. Ethan Perry, I saw Householder on the drag route across the middle. He was open as well, but he hit Ethan Perry and got a 29-yard gain out of it. Good for the Alma Airedales down inside the five. The ball resting, just a football length inside the five-yard line. 9.07 to go here in the third quarter. Airedales trying to put another score on the board. They're leading 7 to nothing. Both ends in tight. Now Householder is flanked to the right side. Householder moves back to the right halfback position. 